gotta get this stuff out of here, man. Yeah. Gotta get it out of here. Boots on the ground, letting the whole community know. Yeah. We knocking on doors. We left another uh, a group, a lady pointed us to a house where she had family, knocked on the door, talked to them. Um, they said they'll come out. Yeah, man, we knocking on doors right here, cuz we ain't just live on the right. phone. We knocking on doors. Believe that. Knocking on doors. Knocking doors down. <laughs> you dig? For the holidays, For you know what I'm saying? In a good way. In a good way. In a good way. We ain't taking nothing out. We putting stuff in we there. We putting stuff in there. All right, so here we are at the Carolina Pines Community Center in Raleigh, North Carolina, with one of the sponsors from C&J Towing. Uh, can you give us the name of your company and some insight of how your business started? As you said, we are C&J Towing. Uh, been in business for about five or six years. Uh, Black-owned business. Uh, started from one truck to, you know, multiple trucks now. Um, we provide services, towing, uh, roadside assistance, such as tire changes, lockouts, fuel delivery, battery boost, mm -hmm. stuff of that nature. Um, just do roadside assistance, man. Uh, we're not one of those towing companies where we reap on or stuff like that. We're right. more so on the help side. Okay. And that's what um, brings us to this event today, uh, trying to give back in the community. Well, this is We Care Transportation, INC, which is incorporated. The transportation is a good field to get into. If it's not in the air, it's on water or land or whatever the case may be. So transportation was a good concept that I came up with, but then I wanted to create something where I can pick up people, elderly folks, or picking up kids, because we started off picking up kids. Mm -hmm. And we started off with the private schools and things of that nature. So once we got affiliated and got to know other people that gave us more better connections, that's when we got into actually to, to, to the uh, more so of uh, the um, side of it where we got into the medical side of it, mm -hmm. transporting elderly to and from their doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. So we started there, and that's, that started back in, um, that contract started in two, 2010, mm -hmm. and we've been doing that ever since, and also with some other ventures that we've been doing, the 26-foot box trucks, tractor trailers, and all that stuff, too. So we've been in the transportation field for quite some time, and it branched out with us doing other things. I also trade. Mm -hmm. I love doing my trading. I do uh, regular foreign currency trading, uh, a little bit of binary option, a little bit of Bitcoins, and mm -hmm. uh, regular Forex, and my wife, she did and dabbles into it as well, the Forex mm -hmm. side of it. And we just love it, man. And um, like we're here right now, Toy for Tots, you know, it's all about giving. So that's mm -hmm. all we thought about giving, linked up with um, uh, C&J Towing and K&W Towing mm -hmm. and uh, a Jermaine's Towing Company. So we just affiliated ourselves with them and wanted to link up and make this happen for the kids. The uh, name of my business is k and Towing and Roadside. Um, how I started, I used to work at uh, Central Prison with Chris. And one day he asked me that I wanted to work part-time for him. So, of course, I said, yeah, and I worked for him for, I was like, two, almost three years, mm -hmm. and um, just as I was learning the business more, it was like something that I was interested in doing myself. Um, with this help, I was able to, you know, learn more about the business and the back end of it, and, you know, to save my money from working with him and working in prison. Yeah. Uh, and kind of, and started. You did your own thing. You just... Just evolve. Yes. I mean, that's so important, man. People to be open to learn, accept the game that's passed, and also take that to a whole nother level and do your own thing. So I commend you for doing something like that. That's dope. And it's, and to be honest, it's something that I never thought of ever doing. Like, talking right. in roadside assistance, it never crossed my mind until I met him. Uh, Jermaine Williams, uh, Mr. Williams Express. Uh, I run a transportation company. Mm -hmm. Um. I've been running it for about 12, 14 years, man. I don't know how long I had this headache, great headache for. Yeah. But uh, been in, into it for a while, and uh, it's a good thing, man. I, I love what I do. Yeah, absolutely. How do you start? Like, what got you into transportation? Um, Honestly, uh, one of my cousins, T. Williams, uh, he's been in it uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen the things he was doing and I was just dibbling and dabbling in the little stuff, you know, just trying to find my niche like right. anybody else. And uh, once I got into it, I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. This is where I, you know, right. feel like I need to be. What's up, what's up, man? Hey, y'all got some kids, man? We got some, um, 
We're doing a Toys for Tot over here at Carolina Pines. We're giving away some toys for the kids, man. If y'all got some kids or know some kids that need some toys, send them over there. We're going to be clearing out of there about 3 o'clock. We got to get all that stuff out of there. At Carolina Pines, the community center right here? Yeah. Yeah. Send them up to 3. To 3. We got to get it out of there about 3 o'clock. We got a lot of stuff. Just send the kids on. Monitor donations, all that. Just come on. Anybody you know, just send them on. Send them come on. Yep. Yeah, man. Make it. Make it happen. Tell, hey, tell her. Tell her we're getting away. She got to take free. Oh, man. Look, man. You come over there and get it for him. You come over there and get it for him. Yeah. All right, man. Peace. All right. What do you say about what, man? <laughs> Cause we getting stories out here today, all right? That's it, baby mama tripping. Christmas week, son birthday, man. I told him, man, you come get the toy. Right, right. Hey, you know, don't even, you, you know, can't even blame on your baby mama. It's all good. She you tripping. Come the you come get the you toys get for your son. I see that you guys are out here at the community center just giving back to the kids right here before the holiday season. Uh, can you tell us why doing these type of things are important to you? Uh, well, coming from uh, where I'm from, uh, I've seen a lot of kids struggle and a lot of kids didn't get what they wanted for Christmas or to that nature. Um, but if we've been blessed all year, why not be a blessing to someone else? Um, that's how I feel about it. Um, I feel like, you know, it's like sowing seeds um, mm -hmm. and then you... Um, pos prosper after that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I just feel like giving back is you'll never be blessed if you just try to be stingy or not try to give back. So, yeah. it's important to give back, especially to the ones that's in need. Um, giving has always been um, an important factor uh, for mm -hmm. us. Um, we've been given since we've met, since we've known each other. Um, yeah some years back we on what 23 years um i think the passion of um giving has just been from our families um and then it went stemmed from me working at the children's hospital and, and getting into the foster care world um just you know being the, the the first person that dss workers would um see and i would have to do um register them especially you know because they are they were kids in foster care and um so more of the giving stemmed from that, um, just being around um, the Children's Hospital and seeing the need, um, seeing the needs of a lot of foster kids, and and we just kind of we just went from there. We started fostering about 15 years ago, then we started getting into um, the elderly and um, kind of uh, fostering them as well. But um, I think giving has always been um, been a passion of ours. Um, I mean, even stemmed to me giving one of my kidneys, you know, to a family member. So giving has always been um, something that me and my husband always love to do. I, I just know that there's people less fortunate than my kids. And if I can help somebody in any way possible, I will. Oh, uh, man, this, uh, I think this is a need. It's not even just a one or something that I just like to do. It's a great feeling. It's a, it's a need. People need this, like, uh, you know, I've been from Brooklyn, New York, and a lot of people wasn't giving back, but the people that did, it, it, it carried on for years. It, it just left something in my heart that was just right. like, man, if I didn't get this, I would have never even knew this was out there. Right. So it's just a big experience for me. Yeah, you know, us seeing stuff as kids can be like an inspiration, like, you know what, I'm gonna get in a situation where I can give back too, because maybe we didn't have as much, so that's, that's dope that you actually had that insight, you know, growing up. By doing this, are you trying to set any type of an example to others, or you know, what is your what is your goal with you know doing things like this and your company? Well, I mean, I really don't have a reason behind it because I feel like um, if you do something, do it from the heart. Mm -hmm. So um, hopefully, you know, others will follow suit. Mm -hmm. um, and it was funny how this event got started. Um, we was. Um, the other sponsors is guys I know, mm -hmm. and they always taught me. They actually started, some of them started a business before I did. Mm -hmm. So they taught me in the importance of giving back, and they mentored me. You right. know what I'm saying? So when this event was brought up, you know, everybody was 
oh yeah, let's do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, I just want this event this year to just be a stepping stone. So next year we have more vendors, more vendors, more vendors, and everybody be like, oh, I, I like what they're doing. You know right. what I'm saying? Giving back to the community. So yeah, so I just want everybody to be on a page where they're not selfish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, just don't think about you all the time. You know, think about the others in need. Um, yeah. That's what we're here for. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, we're here to bless others. Yeah, I agree. We just finished speaking with a uh, Hispanic group that didn't speak English. So I'm out here struggling trying to <laughs> get her to understand what I'm saying. Get to the truck. Jay like was. Let's take her to fly. I'm like, how they gonna read a flyer yeah. if they can't understand the language? They Man, understand. bruh. They understand. He took the flyer and she read it to him. I was like, yo, he ain't never seen nothing like that. She said, si, senor. <laughs> so, like, that, that was dope. Yeah, man. Andale, she was like, Andale, Andale. Like, getting all her kids. She got about three kids out there. Yeah. So, that was, that was dope. That was dope. You guys are here giving back. And also, in your journey, people were giving back to you, giving you information and knowledge. And that's giving back, receiving all that is community. And yes. that's what we all doing here. It's like building a community, giving back to your mm -hmm. community, understanding that you're not in it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and we're stronger together, together. together. in, in right. every Absolutely. aspect of it. Absolutely. So, you know, just Absolutely. love what you guys are doing. And let's mm -hmm. keep pushing forward with that. Mm -hmm. Now, I did want to ask, did you have any kids of your own? Oh yeah, absolutely. How we many have, kids do y'all have? We have four. Yeah. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome. So yeah. is there any message or example that you're trying to set for them by giving back as well as starting your own business? And um, if it is, if so, can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, so um, we'll start from Anaya. Anaya uh, is in the Maryland area. She's married. She's doing her own thing. She's into nonprofits as well because we also have a nonprofit. So she's into nonprofits, does nonprofit work. Um, and we have our daughter who's here, our 21 year old. Um, she's an IT analyst and she also works with us at our adult group home. So she works just to know the ropes and you know mm -hmm. if anything happens, she knows what to do. She works as well doing the transportation. Then we have our um, our 19 year old, he's at work now at the adult group home, so he's working currently. He will be into the transportation world as well um, with us. And then we have our 15 year old, he's just, He's just chilling right now. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. he's understanding. He's, he's in our meetings, well. our family business meetings. Right. So he kind of hear, you know, what we do, how we how how we finesse things, how we, you know, how we um, how we're building and how we're trying to build, um, you know, generational wealth. Um, so and they, and they also trade. Um, our kids also trade. Dejane trades. David trades. Um, Eric is getting into trading. So we at any day, if she leaves her IT job and decides she, you know, she doesn't want to work anymore. More she can trade and make some good money. Right. You know, um, my husband's very a uh, very good trader. He makes very good money in trading. So um, that's one of the big things. We just kind of teach them the same the same things that we know. Always have multiple streams More of streams. income, yeah, and absolutely. never you never have to fall back or depend on anyone unless there's a dire need. I always just try to teach my kids to uh, just always want to be respectful. Um, a lot of people less, less fortunate than us. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, just treat everybody the same. Yeah. And as far as starting my own business, <sighs> growing up, it was like, okay, you got to go to college. You mm -hmm. got to do this. You got to do that. Mm -hmm. You got to get a job, which I did. I went to college. I got my degree in criminal justice. Mm -hmm. So I worked at the prison. But you can also do more. You don't have to live a do the nine to five thing. You can have right. your own business, make your own hours. You just got to be dedicated to it. So that's what I try to teach my kids. And also, my kids ride with me on a tow truck all the time. Ah, They've been riding so. with me since I've been working with him. Yeah. I got pictures of them with me in the truck, his trucks, my yeah. trucks. They know how to operate the tow truck better than some grown men do. That's what's so. up. Hey, still passing game. Like, this is what you continuously do. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of things out here in this world that we get, want our kids to have. I just want them to have happiness and being able to see further than them what I've seen at the time when I was young. Yeah. And if they could see the bigger picture quicker and faster, I feel like I've done my job. Now, here we are at the end of the, you know, toy drive, you know, helping the kids 
you know, just making sure we can put a smile on some kids' faces. Now, this room was filled with toys, and now it's nearly empty. Um, so can you guys tell us a little bit about the experience and what you think, um, if you think the event was a success or not? And anyone can start. Well, I feel like it's a success because this is the bridge point of something turbo, and Chris came up with an idea, an exceptional idea, and you can tell there's always a beginning to something. So just just imagine when we came in there, it was just a little bit of toys. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, everybody's dropping off toys, made them dropping off toys, and next thing you know, the room was filled with toys. But as you just stated, there's nothing hardly even here now. So I'm feeling that right now, and it's a success, you know, because there are some kids, some underprivileged kids that are out here in this world today that don't have anything. I was one of them, you know, so just imagine that we was able to give to someone that was in need, and that's what it's all about, the giving. It's more more so, uh, you know, the, the giving, it's all about giving, but the blessing comes after that, so it's all about giving. Yeah, absolutely. I heard you mention this was the first, you know, yeah, event? First, first of all. Wow, wow. The first so ever annual. The first annual? The first ever annual. That's very important because he's saying annual. That means it's going to be an ongoing, ongoing. thing. Yes. And uh, I heard in some of the interviews how important starting something and continuing to go with it. So uh, what's, what's your end goal for you know doing this thing? What's going to be the name of the annual event? Any ideas with that so far? Mm. I think we can be spontaneous as we grow each year, you mm -hmm. know, as we feel as though that the need is it's more, it's, it's becoming more into the community. The people that are in need more, like I was just talking to Turbo and Chris about, you know, maybe we go into the community and see if people that uh, in the need of getting that rent paid, you know, so we can add those things that we implement in each year, something different, you know, and then we can change the name, come up with a different concept, because I'm pretty sure we all creative here, so all minds together, you know, we work, you know, uh, to you know, to come up with a great idea right. and a good name for it. Yeah, yeah. hoping, hoping is never ending. Right, uh, hoping is, is, is yeah, it's no limit. No. So, you know, we we want to keep this pushing forward. Absolutely, and we you guys started up right here out of Raleigh, North Carolina, yeah. the capital. Is is this going to be the home? place you want to continue to do it annually or do you think you might want to do other different community centers in the future um probably open it up as wide as it can go you know we started off and this is what, a 30 40 by 40 foot room mm -hmm. hopefully next year we'll be in the gymnasium for the tour yeah. mm -hmm. and then <laughs> yeah. you have auditorium and then yeah. go from there growth and development that's right. what it's all about yeah absolutely absolutely <clears throat> so um is there anything that you guys would want to let's let uh, in, any of the kids, any adults, just just know going forward what they can look out for, how they can you know reach out and also support because doing something like this it takes a community. It didn't just happen because of you know the four or five and you all. You guys were reaching out to others and they were just coming in to pitch in as well because I you know I saw on the flyer you know people can drop off gifts Absolutely. and pick up. So, uh, you know, anything you can say to that in the future? I feel like it's not just limited to this room. Like you said, it's an open community effort. See a child, chastise a child, child come up, child be better, period. That's the way it should go. Mm -hmm. We don't have that a lot of times, but yeah. for young black men here, mm -hmm. you gotta try to push the envelope, change the vibe, change the scene. Um, give them something else to look at. It ain't all about sports. It ain't all about cars. It ain't all about none of that. Right. This is every day. This is what we do every day. This is not just secluded to today. This is what we do every day. Not just for each other, but for anybody that we see. It's unconscious. Right. So do we expect a blessing? We know we'll get blessed for it. But it's not expecting the blessing. It's not it not expecting the blessing is when you get blessed. Right. At the highest point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. Right. And just to replicate the idea and just piggyback on what Gerald was saying, you know, it's all about, you know, us coming together. Like he just stated, it's for black men up here, you know what I'm saying? We're not in the streets doing something negative. We're doing something positive to reach out in the community, you know, help as many kids as we possibly can, you know, reach one, teach one, yeah. you know, based on that concept, you know. So if we can keep pressing forward so we can break a lot of the generational curses, That'd be a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah. So I want to make things better for my kids' uh, uh, future, you know, their kids' kids' future. So we yeah. change the dynamic in that. 
and you know, spur them up and let them know that you kept pressing forward, pushing forward, not back, but keep pushing forward no matter what. Because yeah. that's going to be failure. Failure leads to success. Absolutely. Yeah. If you can fail at something, you can be very successful with it because you're learning from it. It gives you that wisdom to learn what not to do. And then you press it by giving to your kids and telling them what not to do. They may think, like my wife said, they get on that, oh, you get on my nerves, you know, with kids. Mm-hmm. Think about it because you're always getting on them. Right. But if we've been through it, we got to teach you in gotta order to you. change that direction so you won't, hey, if I tell you to watch that step, you know, so you won't fall like I did. Right. And, you know, I'm only pushing you forward, but I'm helping you along the way. Absolutely. So, you know, with that, you know, like I said, we just keep pushing this thing in. Whether we doing this thing here again for the next five years, then mm-hmm. so then so be it, you know. But, like, the whole concept of me and my wife forming our nonprofit, which is my goal, our mission, it was our goal to to I was it was my goal or me, me and my wife. Mm-hmm. It was my goal, but I mission to get everybody involved in what we were trying to do. So we getting everybody involved out, outside of here would be a great thing. So this thing can be blown up as big as we possibly can make it. You know, make it global. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, and with people coming in, you know, getting toys, <clears throat> picking up toys for their families um, because maybe they couldn't have afforded it to be able to do so. Mm-hmm. I know we hear some stories. I sound, I know that you had an interesting story. Someone spoke to you, gave you like a, a testimony. Can you let the people know kind of what she advised to you? Oh, wow. That was that was very touching. It was, uh, she was in a pretty big situation. And you know, it happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, the tears that came to her eyes pretty much almost came to mine just knowing that we really was helping somebody that was really in the need of help. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's just a blessing, man. One hand washes the other. When somebody else is down, if one of my guys is down and they, and they give me a phone call and I know it, right. I'm on the way. Yeah. Whatever I can do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it might not be financial. It could be just advice. Right, right. Or sometimes it could be pick me up from here. Mm-hmm. Just, yo, just come around me. I just need to see your face. Right. And, uh, Going back to that that young lady, it was uh, it was real. I think uh, she came from one of James people's, and uh, she touched me, man. She touched me, and uh, that's what we're here for, though. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're here for. And if I can't do it, hopefully one of these guys can't right. do it. And if one of these guys can't do it, hopefully you can do it or somebody else can do it. And right. it's, like I said, one hand washes the other. Man. Yeah, so, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So she was just going through some rough times, and this yeah. is like a saving grace for her. Bless you. All right. Bless you. Without a doubt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And not only that, they actually came um, 30, 40 miles outside of Raleigh. Seven, oh, right? Mm-hmm. I think. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So you you obviously know that you know we we was here helping you know provide a need for people, and they was coming to you know just get those things. And I I really felt hard you know felt just looking at people come in and you know with smiles on their faces like because it's just something that they maybe wouldn't have gotten when they got it you know right. and it's trickling down to the kid you know they're saying that i know mom or dad is out here struggling but they still provided this for me yeah. uh, and we look over <clears throat> events like this because a lot of people are prideful they won't even come and pick yeah, up well, things that's when they are. know they sure. need it and but you know we got to open those doors and allow them to know like look it's no judgment this is for no judgment. you we are trying to help because we have experienced I'm pretty sure exactly what you're experiencing. <laughs> you know, we've seen family members in those same predicaments. Right. And, uh, you know, we weren't always in a place to be able to give back what yeah. we are now. Absolutely. And we know how to collaborate with others that's to right. make something big like this happen. Yeah. And um, that's just so, so important. And just seeing you guys continue to work together, uh, that's inspiration. Uh, that's why I want to just let everyone that's tuning in, you know, continue doing exactly like these guys are doing. Uh, watch what they're doing. Try to be a part of it, you know, and uh, and also support the cause. If you don't feel like you are, everyone can't get in front of a camera. And just because you can't get in front of a camera, that don't mean that you can't be a great resource. Behind the um, scenes. You know, right. behind the scenes. Absolutely. You know, uh, and that's just so important <clears throat> as well, you know. Uh, and um, you, people may not have those uh, know how to reach out to someone or how to network, but you may know someone who can. And you're looking at some gentlemen that can network. Obviously, they work together and pulled off a positive event. So reach out to them, and then it's and you are still part of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to let that be known. So, is there anything else that you guys would like to say before we sign off, or any message that you would just like to you know put out there? Oh, so, a beautiful thing. 
I would like to say uh, appreciate you, Matt, for coming Absolutely, out here. Absolutely, without a doubt. Uh, I'm coming from Greensboro. Um, I know it's North Carolina still. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Know you from the same city I'm from, um, but appreciate still you time. coming out here yeah. to represent this area for us and putting the word out there. You promoted all this stuff was last minute. Um, appreciate my brothers right here. Mm-hmm. I would man. I would never want to do it with nobody else but these brothers. Um, it was last minute, and we just stuck together. Yeah. And um, many times we wanted to say, "Oh, you still want to do it? Mm-hmm. We 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 in it now. So right. we got to finish the um, project. So I appreciate um, all the supporters that that was out there helping mm-hmm. us support. Um, appreciate everybody that dropped off. I just appreciate it. Um, for sure, next year will be bigger. Um, we're gonna start in advance. Um, hopefully, we will have more sponsor, more vendors. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, appreciate you, man. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. Man. I'm gonna say one more thing. Pick it back off him. We're gonna make it annual, so we can be reached immediately, starting now, as of today, nice. for donations mm-hmm. or whatever they may be. Um, we will put them in the right places they need to go. So. You can reach out if that's what you want to do. Absolutely. Reach out to any of these brothers that you see on this panel. Uh, heck, you can reach out to me, yeah. and I'll make sure it's funneled in the right direction as well. Uh, emails, calls, texts, anything. Uh, we a community. We work together. We network. And this is how it goes. That's right, man. We do appreciate that because this event was better than amazing. So can't, can't, you can't, we can't look back now. We got to keep going forward. Yes, sir. Pushing forward. All right. Well, definitely appreciate you guys, man. Until next time, y'all hold it down. Don't let it hold you. We out. It's a beautiful day. It's the highest point podcast. More than the pod, it's a lifestyle. Also, can you tell the people how they can find your business and you know how to reach out to you for your services? Um, yeah. Um, as on the shirt, nine eight four two four four zero two four zero. Um, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is CJ. Towing LLC. Um, Facebook is CNJ Towing um, Recovery. Um, also, we have a website, um, CNJ Towing, uh, spelled out. The end is services.com. Um, reach out. Uh, we actually we are in the season where it's busy for us, so we are hiring. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that's a part of giving back too. Uh, so if you need a job, um, no experience needed. Um, we're willing to train. Um, just make sure you have a clean, you know, background or whatever. Uh, I got a Facebook page. It's Kane and Toe. Uh, my Instagram is Kane and Toe. Uh, my phone number is 919-727-9836. That's the business line. You can call, text, and leave a voicemail on that. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can reach us. That's what's up. We'll definitely be in contact, man. Appreciate what you're doing. Appreciate you hogging us today. All right, man. Thank you. All right, man. Peace. Hey, those are good. Okay. Well, actually, you can find us on our website, which is mm-hmm. wecaretransportation.com. And also, we have a number, which is 1-800-507-5766. And also, uh, what else? You can Facebook. Add we're on Facebook. Facebook. We have um, Facebook we're on Twitter. Instagram. Twitter. And we're on Twitter. So um, you guys can definitely find us. Um, but for transportation, as my husband mentioned, 800 507 5766. And it's We Care That's Transportation. And it is David and Allison. I yes. know we didn't get, you guys didn't get the name in the beginning, but it's David and Allison.